Hey guys, so I want to make this video to bring an issue to light that I think a lot of you aren't aware of. And this is going to be applicable to a lot of the guys that fly micros, but this is going to apply to pretty much anyone that uses these linear whip antennas that we often chuck out and don't use. And I know you guys are saying, okay, don't use the linear whip antennas. You should be using circular polarized antennas. I get that. I know that. But the way that things are going with the micros is as everything is going to these linear antennas because they're more durable in crashes, whereas a lot of the cloverleaf antennas will just completely disintegrate in a crash, which is why we're going to these antennas. So I get that argument. Please don't leave any comments about that. I understand that. This is to help people that are using these antennas and to get better reception. So if you're having reception issues, I can tell you one of the reasons why and this is something that I've, I've been checking on a lot of my antennas, and I think that a lot of people don't know about this, but the length of the antenna here matters. And what matters is the exposed part of the antenna. So the, this antenna is a, is a, what's called a dipole or a monopole. Basically, there's a wire that comes up from the, where the antenna is soldered onto the radio transmitter, and then the part here is actually covered, well, well below the heat shrink, is covered in a coax or ground element, and then the top part here is not is exposed. So there's no ground element covering up this wire here. And this is the wire that actually does the transmitting and receiving. And the length of this wire is very important because it's going to determine how this antenna is tuned. So uh, I know that Drone Racer 101 was having some issues with his. This is the E0 13, and you get a lot of these sort of micros with these antennas from China. They they have a lot of issues with the length of this antenna here, and it has to do with quality control because it's cheaper and they're not spending the money to check this. But if you have an antenna here that doesn't match the one you have, you're going to have some reception issues. And also will also will depend on what channel you're using within the 5.0 gigahertz band that's going to be optimal for this antenna, and the length of this exposed part here is going to be the determining factor. So the 5.8 gigahertz band is not just one channel. It's a bunch of frequencies and a bunch of different bands that range from about 5.3 something gigahertz to 5.9 something gigahertz. It's a pretty wide range of frequencies. And so this antenna here, this exposed part, is going to send out a frequency that's optimal for this length. And it turns out that on mine here, it's different from what the optimal length would be for 5.0 gigahertz. So if you're, if you're assuming that the middle of the band of 5.0 gigahertz is 5,800 megahertz, right in the middle, let's just say, then the optimal length for 5,800 megahertz is determined by a formula. And I'm just gonna write down the formula here so you guys can make a note of it. So in order to determine the uh, optimal length of that exposed part of the antenna for a frequency that you choose, let's say 5800, it would be, so it would be the length in millimeters will be equal to C, which is the speed of light, divided by the frequency in megahertz, divided by four. And the reason they use four is, uh, Pretty much all of these whip antennas are using a, what's called a quarter wave dipole, so it's it's a quarter of the frequency length of of the transmission of this frequency. So if I plug in the numbers here for so if C is the speed of light, which is three hundred thousand meters per second, and you're going to divide it by fifty eight hundred megahertz, and you're going to divide that by four, and if you plug that into a calculator. It's going to give you, uh, I believe the number is 12.79 millimeters. So that's what, if you, if, you're, if you want an antenna that's going to give you optimal transmission at 5800 megahertz, you want an uh, antenna that's 12.79 millimeters. So I was like checking this out and my antenna here on my E013 Okay, so mine comes in at 13.9 millimeters. It's way, way too long. And if you plug that number into this formula for that length here, the frequency is like way off the way off the band. It's like 
uh, well, not, not anywhere close to 1500. It's like 5500 megahertz. And so if I'm if I'm tuning this or transmitting at say 5900 megahertz, then this antenna is not optimal for 5900 megahertz. Um, especially if, you know if you're on the other side of the spectrum, then you're going to get a lot of issues with your video transmission breakups and just loss of video, etc. Now, the and the length of the antenna on the receiving end also matters, and this is the antenna that was included with the goggles that came with this kit. And you can just pop this little cover off here, and maybe you guys didn't know that, but inside here, this is what the antenna looks like, and it's the same quarter wave dipole antenna. And this part here is the exposed part, and it's nowhere near 13.9 millimeters. It's yeah. So this one comes in at 11.4 millimeters, and so this being shorter, the frequency that is optimal for this length is something like. 6.8 gigahertz. So it's not, it's like way off the band. So that's the thing about a lot of these antennas. They're typically not the right length. Now, in this case, it's way too short. So there's not much you can do about this to fix this. You just shouldn't use this antenna. I'm, I'm not going to. But if you have an antenna that's too long, like for example, I think this one here is pretty long. This is just a, one of these like spare antennas that they sell. And this one comes in at also 11.8, which is kind of short as well. So this one is not going to be that usable unless I want to go really high in the band. What what I want to do here is look for ones that are longer. So this is like longer than the length I want, the 12.79 or 12.8 millimeters. And so what I can do is I can set my caliper to that length and then I can then snip off the excess amount. So you can see there that there's a little bit of excess there at the end. I can just snip that off and then the antenna will be the correct length for the frequency I'm looking for. So you haven't, if you happen to have an antenna that's too short, you're kind of out of luck because then you're going to have to switch out this, uh, basically the whole antenna here and desolder it and put a new one on to get the correct length if it's too short. If it's too long, it, that's an easier problem. You can just cut that to the length. And I would say try and go somewhere around the middle of the band you know, 5800 megahertz, somewhere in there. So it's going to be in the 12.7 to like 12.9 millimeter length, somewhere in there would be just fine. I think you're going to run into problems when you're over 13 millimeters and you're under um, like 12.3 millimeters. And you're kind of on the fringes of the the outer edges of the 5.8 gigahertz band. And then in that case, the only, the only solution there is to then tune your channel that you want to transmit or receive at to what is optimal for that length. That's pretty much the only other solution. But if you want to fly certain channels like I do, um, then you, your, your only solution is to cut the antenna or replace it and cut it to the length that you want. So I hope this is this makes sense to you guys. It's kind of technical, but you know, this is the way um, the this is the way analog video works. So if you want, you know, good reception on your micros with these little linear whip antennas, this is what you got to do. Anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.